The newest weather model data is hinting that Hurricane Kiko is going to pass well to the north of Hawaii. It is early morning on September 7th, 2025. Meteorologist Drew Davis alongside with you. We've got a no hype forecast for you today when taking a look at the weather models. Let's get right into it because of course we've been watching Hurricane Kiko very closely out there. Of course, I want to show you the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Kiko has been going back and forth between category three to category four. It is back up at category four strength. We'll show you the satellite here in a little bit, but it is a very strong storm. It's got 140 mile per hour maximum sustained winds, and it's moving west northwestward at 12 miles per hour. So it's still moving pretty close, pretty slowly. And again, this storm is very small, but very mighty. Let's take a look at the track going forward. It is entering a very hostile environment for a tropical cyclone development by early Sunday morning. It is a category three, then it is a category two by Monday, then a category one by Monday afternoon, and then a tropical storm as it's moving to the north of the island chain. It should be falling apart by the time we get to Thursday evening around 8 p.m. out there. Again, Kiko is a smaller than average hurricane, just zooming in a little bit closer out there. You can see just measuring across Kiko, it's about 200 miles wide, but this satellite imagery really reveals the environment that you can see Kiko moving into. At the beginning of the loop, you see that very defined eye wall right here, those black colors. It's starting to get a little bit weaker out there, especially as you're starting to see those red and orange colors coming in on the south and southwestern parts of the eye out there. Again, Kiko is expected to move well to the north of the island chain. The model trend over the past couple of days has been keeping uh has kept pushing further northward so let's take a look at the chance for tropical storm force winds out there that's 39 miles per hour and above tropical fo uh, storm force winds are expected to remain over the ocean open ocean as it continues moving off towards the northwest which will cut off the trade winds as we go into next week you can see this green color that's developing over the island chain that is a 10 percent chance for tropical storm force winds. so a very small chance especially as the center of kiko is so far north north. Again, it is going to cut our trade winds off. It is going to make it very humid across the island chain. We're going to be seeing south Kona winds, and without winds, it just gets very miserable out there with the humidity and the heat. Of course, we've been talking about that weather model trend over the past couple of days and how it's been pulling further northward. Uh, let's actually take a look at the spaghetti plots out there. We are expecting uh, to see more northward spread going forward, but still some of the spread is uh, over the island chain. This is some of the outliers that we're still seeing. You'll see a little bit of a breakup right here from the spaghetti plots, but those outliers are starting to even stretch up further northward, which is a little bit different than what we were seeing earlier in the week. The worst case scenario that I see right now is the more southward track, but I want to say that is looking less and less likely. Outer band rainfall in this situation, some minor flooding, if any, and then, of course, big surf with the center of Kiko being so close. The best case scenario, which is looking like the more likely track, the more northward track. It would be well over open water, no major impacts, elevated surf, and a few pop-up showers out there. Of course, the humidity. The past couple of days, I've been talking about this disturbance, this low pressure system that cut off from the jet stream. You can see here's the jet stream up here. This is even developed into its own cutoff low. This is what we're watching right here, the lower pressure that's in between these two strong high pressure systems. This one right here and this one right here. It's the darker orange colors. This has been moving further southward and has actually been been determining where Kiko is going to track. It's actually attracted to this lower pressure system. The high pressure off to the east and northeast of Kiko rotates counter or rotates clockwise and is pulling it up further northward towards this break in the high pressure system. So that's why it's continuing to move north and that's been very consistent in the weather models out there over the past couple of days. And you can even see this low pressure system up here uh, is actually starting to move into parts of the western United States. I'll take a look at that in a little bit to see our continental United States forecast. You can see our sea surface temperatures. Again, Kiko is moving into a very hostile environment for uh, tropical cyclone development. Of course, everybody knows you need warm ocean water out there to get strong systems like that. It's moving into waters at 78. That's in the green color areas that are a little bit more turquoise at 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That is not 
not conducive for tropical cyclone development. Of course, it's going to be moving into warmer waters as it gets north and northwest of Hawaii, but the thing that's going to continue weakening Kiko is the strong wind shear. Usually over Hawaii, especially in the high levels of the atmosphere, there's strong westerly winds, and at the surface, you've got these trade winds coming in from the east and northeast. When you have these this difference in direction and difference in speed out there, it's strong wind shear, and tropical cyclones just don't deal well with that. That's in those bright blue colors that you saw north of the island chain. It's just not good for the the potential development of a system. Of course, the water is just out to the east and southeast of the island chain. Also very cool. Uh, it, it's cool, cooler than normal, actually. It's a uh, it's a little bit colder than what we're seeing on average. Outside of the, of course, the impacts that we were expecting earlier this week, the main one seems to be the strong uh, and large surf. Of course, we're seeing wave heights right out in the center of Kiko right now, just clicking right in the center. You can see 32 foot waves right in the center of the storm. Of course, we're not going to be seeing 32 foot waves on the island chain, but we likely will see a high surf advisory on east facing shores. Just a quick look at our swell forecast. Of course, uh, Kiko is right here uh, in the bright, bright orange, bright yellow, bright red. It's going to continue moving off towards the west northwest, and we're starting to see large surf Tuesday morning, likely seeing high surf advisories go up from the National Weather Service as we're going into Monday on east facing shores and continue to move off towards the northwest throughout Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. A quick look at the two models that we typically show on this show. We've got the American model right here. This has just been trending so much further northward. I want you to watch right up there going forward. Kiko stays well to the north of the island chain. Not much rainfall out there, if anything. As we're going into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, we're likely going to be seeing um, pop-up leeward showers, sea breeze showers during the afternoon because of the light winds. That's also in the European model out there. Just watching, again, up here to the northeast, this is where you're going to see Kiko moving in. It's well off towards the north of the island chain, and then you're starting to see those pop-up afternoon showers throughout Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, we're watching Kiko very closely. We've got to make sure that we're continuing to see how this storm evolves, but it, all signs are pointing to it going well to the north of the island chain, and it's going to be a tropical storm while it does. But still, we have to be vigilant out there. Kiko, of course, is Category 4 right now, and if it doesn't start to uh, disintegrate out there in that hostile environment, we'll have to reevaluate the forecast. Out there, taking a look at the Atlantic. Before I show you this model, I actually want to show you the uh, National Hurricane Center website, because you can see over the past couple of weeks, we've been tracking, a or the past couple of days, they've had a high chance for development out over the next seven days for a tropical wave, but they given it a 0% chance for development out there. So it's a small chance for development. Really, if anything, that wave that we were watching over near uh, Africa and in the eastern parts of the Atlantic seems to be falling apart out there. So I do want to get bring it back. You can see in the long range models, really not much activity going forward. You can see a little bit of activity out here uh, in the eastern Atlantic, but it doesn't seem like it's going to spin up into anything. So Long term, we may not even be seeing anything, at least over the next seven days in the Atlantic. That could change, though. Just a quick look at what's going on in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We've got this high-pressure system right here. Uh, this is the Bermuda High. It's actually going to start shifting a little bit further eastward over the next couple of days. You can see it's going into the eastern or the eastern Atlantic by the time we get to Thursday and Friday of next week. No signs to really pointing that we're going to be seeing any strong tropical development over the next week or so. A uh, quick look at the Climate Prediction Center's forecast over the next six to ten days. We've got developing high pressure over the central parts of the U.S. and up towards the north. You can see much warmer than average temperatures for this time of year. This is valid through September. 12th through September 16th. A little bit cooler over parts of California and the East Coast. We're still seeing some impacts from that cold front that we were tracking over the past couple of days. And the mid-levels over the United States, you can actually see this ridge developing right here. This is throughout Saturday and Sunday. It's going to continue moving off towards the east and northeast. And hey, look, there's that uh, cutoff low that we were tracking um, that was actually 
one of the things we pointed out when we were talking about the upper levels with Kiko. This is also going to be dipping closer into the Pacific Northwest and California. One of the reasons we're seeing the cooler weather out there. And of course, we're going to just see how this develops. We'll see if this really gives us any chance for a cold front or anything. But you can see what's going on out there right now. We've still got that cold front that gave us the weather delay for during the Philadelphia Cowboys game. Man, that game did not go the way I wanted it to. CD dropped a couple of uh, bombs or some dimes out there from Dak. Uh, Dak was playing pretty well. <laughs> Sorry for getting into football. Uh, but <laughs> you can see out here we've got this cold front. Uh, let me draw it out for you. It's kind of still hovering over the eastern seaboard and is going to continue pushing out towards the Atlantic. We also have a cold front that's pushing in. It's over the western half of the United States right now. You can kind of draw it out. Uh, a little bit right here. It's uh, oops, wrong tool. You can uh, kind of see it right there. Uh, and of course, we've got the developing high pressure out over the central United States. So really not too much in terms of active weather over the uh, continental United States right now. All eyes have been on Hurricane Kiko. Uh, it's been a very interesting forecast. Of course, is when we identified that cutoff low last week. We were really starting to see that uh, track shifting northward and northward and northward. And over this past weekend, the track was really just to the south of the island chain. So a lot changes with these tropical forecasts. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates. Uh, and thank you for all the support that I've been receiving recently. This has been very um, very awesome to see uh, long form weather content like this uh, succeeding on YouTube. Uh, thanks again. See you tomorrow for another update on Kiko and the uh, continental United States forecast. This has been our see you tomorrow weather permitting and this has been meteorologist Drew Davis.